In this lecture, we are now going to be writing the functionality to actually verify the recapture. So when the user check this box, we also want to check with Google if that is actually valid. So let's get back again to the recapture website. And right here is the server side integration. So we need to make a post request to this specific URL. And then we need to post these three basic information. So basically it requires two, but the remote IP is optional, but we just add it anyway. So we need to send the secret, which is the secret that we copied from here. We need to actually send the response from Google when the user checks on the recapture check box. When the user checks that box, Google is going to attach a response. So we need to send that response alongside with the secret to this specific URL using a post method and then get back the response. So once they send back the response, we determine if it is successful or if it failed. All right, so let's get into the test editor and begin writing that functionality. So the first thing that we want to think about here is that the recapture is going to be something that we may decide to use in other places in our application. So let's say we want to add it to the form that will be used to submit a specific link, a tutorial link. We also need it in our login form. We also need it in our sign up form. So that means that we are going to be reusing it from place to place. So I don't think it would be ideal for us to actually define it inside of this controller. So what we can do is to come here and create a new folder. So we can just call this EPA classes or just call this classes. And then inside of here, we want to create a new class. So we can just call this recapture. So this class is going to do just one thing, recapture validation or verification. So right here, we are going to say public static function verify so the verify is going to take data data should be an array and basically that array will just contain the expected parameters by google so that will be secret response or and remote ip optionally so right here, we want to use Gauze to make a post request. Gauze is already included in the framework. So we can then say client is equal to new client. So that will be Gauze HTTP. So once I did that, you can see that on line seven, my test editor imported the Gauze client. Use Gauze HTTP client. So you should ensure that you are actually adding the use statement here. Otherwise you're going to get an error. So this may be a good time for us to just dump the autoload file again. So compose a dump autoload to regenerate the class map. And then the next thing that we want to do now is to actually make a post request. So we're going to say response. It's going to be equal to client post. So we want to post to that URL. And then we want to pass in data as the form data. So data is what the user is passing in, but we now want to send it across to Google as form params. So the parameter for the forms just be equal to data. And right now we can go and copy the URL here. So let's just grab the URL. Then come back again to the test editor. So this is the URL that we want to post to. And this is the data that we are posting to the URL. So once we get a response, we can then decode it. So we can then say response is equal to JSON decode so be response get body. So we get the body of the response and then we decode it. So before we proceed, let's just return response and then examine the data that is inside of response. So let's get back again to alt controller. So below here on line 31, 
we can then say response. So this will be our response from the recapture. So that will be recapture, verify. And then we want to pass in some data. So we can just pass in an array. F key value pairs, the first one will be secret. So that will be config. Going to get that shortly. And then the next one will be response. So we can get this from request. So that will be request. Input. To grab that value from request. And then we can also get the IP address of the user. So let's just add the IP to the data that we are sending. So that will be remote IP. So this is not required, so it's not a big deal. So we can get that from request. You can say request client IP. So these are the only data that we actually need to post. So right here, we can then do a die and dump. So let's get back again to the browser. And this time we're going to attempt to fill up the form. So I'm going to say Tedia, going to use this email, support at devscreencast.com. And then my password. So I'm just going to ensure that all this pass validation. And then I'm going to check this. So right now when we click on this, I expect this to fail. The reason is because I'm not passing in the secret. Remember that the secret is required here. Secret is required, but now I'm actually passing an empty string. So I expect this to actually fail. So we get success fail, missing input secret. So this illustration was just to quickly show you what happens when the verification fail. So when the verification fail, success becomes false. And then there will be error code. But if it passes, the data will be different. So let's now get back to grab the secrets and then update the code so that we can get a success here. So let's come here, EMV, recapture secret, then paste it here. Then we're going to attempt to do that again. So let's go back to Chrome. So let's feed this up again. And then this should be support. And then password should be. Then I'm going to check this. And then submit it. So now we get success true. And then challenge and then host name. So when it is successful, this is the data that will be returned back to us. So knowing this now, we can now complete the verification method. So let's get back again to the test editor. We are now ready to complete the verify method. So let's go back again to our classes folder, recapture. Instead of returning response here, we want to format the data in such a way that we can actually merge it back to our validation errors. So we are going to create a new variable here. Let's just call this or rather, before we create a variable, let's do some basic check. So we're going to say if it's set, response success. So that will be response. Remember just now, whether it fails or it pass, there's always a key called success. So we want to check if that key is existing and the value of that key is not equal to true. So we're going to say not response success equal to true so this is just another way to write this you can actually just say not response sources so that would be essentially the same so if this is the case we want to create a variable called error this should be an array we can just put a key here called recapture and then this should be equal to another array so we're doing it this way so that it will match with our validation error. So we can then say recapture, verification, fade. 
So one more check that we may need to do is to ensure that this request is actually coming from our domain. So we can just say if it said response success. Or well, this time we should look for response host name. So host name. If this is set, it means that the verification was successful, but then we want to be sure that it is from our domain. So we're going to say response host name it's not equal to config so if you set your host name inside of config we can just grab it here which is exactly what I'm going to do so I'm going to grab the app URL from the environment variable so I'm essentially saying so let's come back again to Chrome if what is being returned here as the host name is not equal to what I defined inside of my environment variable as my host name, I want to reject this. So I want to think that this is coming from an unknown site. This is probably an attack. So we can say app URL should be equal to local.linkshare.com. So let's come back here. And then let's just grab this, paste it here. We can just say request. So this is optional. If you don't want to do this, you can actually just skip this. But I advise you do this. So we can say request originate from a different server. Okay, so finally we want to check if error is set. So error is only going to be set if any of those conditions that we define there is not true. So if what we get inside of sources is not equal to true, then error is going to be set. If what we have inside of host name is not equal to what we defined in our environment variable, then error is going to be set. So we're going to see if it's set error. So if error is set and there's actually an error inside, so the array is not empty. So and there's count of error, we just want to return error. So we're going to say return error. So error is going to be an array. Otherwise, we want to return true. Okay, so lastly, what we want to do here is to wrap all of this inside of a try cache block. So we don't want to crash our application if something goes wrong with Gozel. So we can wrap this in a try catch block. So we can say try, then paste all of that there, and then come to the cache block and then say cache client exception. So client exception is the Gozel exception. So call this exception. Then we can just die this out. So die, or we can actually just return it and then show it as an error. So we can say return exception get message. Okay, so depending on how you chose to actually handle this. But take note that once we included a try cache block and called the client exception class, that this was actually imported here. So you need to add the use statement for use Gauzer HTTP exception, client exception. And that will be all we need to do here. We now need to come inside of auth controller so once we get back the response here, instead of doing a die and dump, we want to then merge it to our validation errors. So we can then come back here and say, we want to do one more check if validation phase or response is an array. So if is array response. So if this is the case, if response is an array, then we know that we need to actually merge both errors together. Okay, so we can first of all, just change this to validation errors. So let's say validation underscore errors. And then here we do one more check to say if it's array, if it's array response and there's actually data inside of response. So response is not just an empty array. 
So if it's array response and count of response, then we actually want to set the variable errors to be equal to an array image. So we want to match validation errors with response. Otherwise, the variable errors should just be equal to validation errors. And that's all we need to do here. But well, one more thing that we may just be careful of is right here we are returning the exception. So what I probably would suggest you do is lock this somewhere in your database and then we can do something similar here. So we can say error recapture and then we can just say yes get message. So we put the message here and then just return that. Okay. So this is because I want to actually show that message, but if you don't want to show it, then you need to log it into your database and then stop the application from continuing running. All right. So that's all we need to do here. Let's just add a doc block, verify recapture. So that is all that we need to do right now. So let's come back here. Say if this is not true, we just want to die and dump request. Oh, all right. So let's get back again to the form and just do one last round of testing before we call it a day for this lecture. Tell you, so this will be support. And then this is going to be my password. Then I'm going to submit. Okay, so this is the actual data that we get back showing that there was no error in our form. We are now ready to actually go to the next phase, which is actually creating the user in the database and then checking if the user is actually uploading a file and then subsequently send an email to the user. So we're going to break it down into sub lectures. So our next step now will be to create the user in the database and then check if they are uploading a file.